So, um, so these questions that were set um, were for the first week of the biodiversity topic, as I mentioned. Um, I'm just going to go through, I'm not going to read through the whole question, obviously, but I'm going to talk through how to do some of these um, and what they're about. OK, there was some maths in some of these. Uh, so using some of the stuff um, that we've talked about in terms of the formulas and things. Um, and we'll just, as I say, just feel free to stop me if there's anything that needs clarification. OK, so um, we're talking here about a biology field trip, which I'm really hoping that we'll get to organise sometime next year. Um, but anyway, some students carry out a survey of, a of some butterfly species in two areas of Heathland. OK, one part of the heathland was used um, regularly by walkers. The other part had been fenced off. So you've got two different areas that are being um, looked at, OK, being assessed. Um, and in two different mornings in June, the students walked along a transect in each area um, four times at 30 minute intervals. So they'd laid out a kind of a what we call a belt transect, transect an area where they were going to walk. OK, um, and they just Basically, look, we're doing butterfly sighting. So just counting and looking at the different types of butterflies that they would, had seen over those periods. The aim of the survey was to compare the biodiversity of the species in two areas. How could we improve the procedure? OK, so there are obviously three marks. There's a number of different things that haven't mentioned. OK, um, but we we can pick out a few obvious things. So one would be, for example, um, more transects okay they've only got one transect on in each area okay so we could have more transect um in different parts to give us more variety okay and look at um different ops. we could look at obviously here they're doing um 30 minute intervals at, on two different mornings so they could go um different times of the day for example or the year because they're only looking in June um, or they could look in different weather conditions. OK, so make sure that, you know, what butterflies are out in different conditions. Um, the other things that it could do, they've just they're, all they're doing is butterfly sighting. They're just looking at the butterflies and um, actually sort of seeing what 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 is it that they, they're spotting. So we could talk about the method so they could actually use, you know, a caption and release method. So you use a butterfly net or something like that to capture the butterflies and then that would give them a much better um, uh, representation. Butterfly net. And then the other thing is like how are they actually correctly identifying the species? So um, obviously some way of doing that would be better. So a key or photographing them or some sort of a guide, that kind of thing. OK, nothing complicated, nothing sort of particularly, if you like, scientific, some, just some kind of general observations, really. OK, so the second part of this is the, the, the maths part to it. OK, so it says the students results are shown in this table. They've got area one here, which remember was the um, accessible area. OK. And they've got area number two, which was the area that was fenced off. OK. Uh, on the next page, it says identify the area with the highest species richness and justify your answer. OK, so the first thing is to look at the numbers and say, well, which one has the sp highest species richness? Well, species richness is the different the number of different species, how many different species there are. We can see there's none of this here. So these only have five. Here we've got six different individuals, six different species. So we would say at the top here that it is area two because it has more species than area one. OK, then it says identify the area with the higher species evenness and justify your answer. OK, species evenness. Remember, looks at how much variation is, is is there in the number of species. Okay, are there lots of one species and not very much of another? 
And if we look at the data again, we don't really need to do a calculation. We can see that in area one, there's quite a big spread from, well, from zero, but from two up to 16. Here, the spread is a lot lower. OK, so the range is a lot smaller. So again, we would say that area two has the higher species evenness. OK, because the range is smaller. So hopefully that makes sense. Right now we do the now we've got the mathematics. OK, so we've got um, using the formula below calculate um, Simpson's index of diversity in area one to be this number, OK, which is written in our table 0.7131 okay, down there. Now they're wanting you to you to basically find the Simpsons index of diversity for area two. OK. Um, and it says that it's greater. It's, it's already told you that you're getting a greater index of diversity. So you know that you're trying to get a number that is, is going to be higher. OK, so use the formula to show that this is the case. So what I'm going to do is fill out, use this table to help us with the, the numbers. OK. So there's two bits of calculations we want to do. Remember, we need to find out what n divided by n is. Now, big N, OK, is this total number. So here it's 40, the total number of individuals for our area two. So this box is going to be n divided by big N. So the number of individuals divided by the total number, OK? And all we're doing is those calculations. I'm not doing these in my head. Just so you know. OK, so that gives us that number. We then need to square that number. OK, so what we're going to put in here is N divided by N squared. Six. Okay. If you remember, we then need the sum of those. Okay. So the sum is 0 0.2024. And then we need one minus that number. Okay. So the Simpsons index is 0 0.7976. Okay. Which compared to area one, we can see is higher. OK, so our answer is going to go in here, 0.7976. And that shows, um, as it says here, that the species index of diversity is greater in area two than area one. OK, now, next question is the, the six mark question that's in the in the, um, the only six mark question in this paper. It said the students concluded that fencing off the area of heathland has, has increased the biodiversity of butterflies. Evaluate the validity of the student's conclusion using all of the information you've been given, including 2.1 yeah, table. So that's I've written in here already. OK, some of the thoughts that you might have. So when you look at your um, own uh, answer to this, OK, I want you to see how you whether you feel you've covered some of these points or not. So there's two differences, there's two opinions here. We may decide that we support this idea that, yes, it has made a difference because of any of these numbers of um, aspects. So um, because the Simpsons index is higher in the fenced area um, and the high index means high biodiversity, um, because there is a greater number of species or a higher species richness, which we have already established, and because the silver studded blue um, butterfly is only found in the fenced area. So those are all evidence to support this idea, okay, to support the student's conclusion. However, there is some evidence against this, okay. Partly, the difference in the Simpsons index is very small. It's actually only about 12%, okay, um, so not particularly significant. The range of the number of individuals is great, is actually greater in area one than area two. So we could argue that the variety 
is better in, in area one. Um, there is a higher number of, uh, of, of a couple of the different species in area one as well. And um, we don't know how long area two has actually been fenced off for. It might only be have been done for you know a few days or a few weeks or whatever. So there's no indication of whether that's had been able to have an effect yet. So those are all ideas that would help you form an opinion. Obviously, you'd have to you could weigh up both and then come to your own conclusion. OK, but you need to use evidence from all of the, the question and the table to help you with that answer. OK, uh, let's go through to the next part. So it says another calculation. OK, um, it's got some a table here. Now, I'm not going to um, go through all of this, the, the, the numbers for this. OK, it does say to show you're working at the bottom here. Let's say show you're working. So you should again use the same method that we I just showed you to work out the number divided by the total number and the number divided by the total number squared and then sum those and then minus one divided by that and you should then end up with 0.275 as your answer okay Oh, sorry, as the sum, not as the, <laughs> that's the sum, 0.275 is the sum. One minus that number should give you 0.725. And you'll notice that it's to two significant figures. So your answer should be 0.73. Okay. Which goes in there. Okay, that's question. That's that question. Last part on question um, two is simply name the piece of equipment that you could use for the random sampling of the plant shown in table six. Um, we've just discussed it. OK, the name of that piece of equipment is the quadrat. OK, any questions from anyone so far? Anything not makes sense? Brilliant. Okay, we'll whisk through the last uh, couple of questions. So, question three. In 2007, scientists studied the effect of roe deer on the biodiversity of the habitat at a number of sites shown on figure 3.1. Okay, um, I'm not quite sure what happened to figure 3.1 um, <laughs> in this question. I realised that um, after looking through it, it didn't seem to translate, so I don't quite know um, <laughs> why, why there's no figure. We can still answer some of these questions, but um, we'll go through it here. At each study site, scientists sampled plants and animals in unfenced areas, okay, where roe deer were present, and in fenced areas where roe deer could not go. Um, explain the importance of sampling in measuring the biodiversity of a habitat. So why do we sample, basically, to, to find out biodiversity? So first thing is, obviously, it is in, um, impossible to count every individual species. Uh, OK. Um, samples give us an estimate. Oh, I can't spell that at all. Estimate, um, which is um, representative of the whole area okay so that's just fairly straightforward why do we do sampling okay why was it important to take samples in fenced and unfenced areas and obviously we want to compare the two areas and we want to um, see the effect of the presence or absence of the roe deer. Okay, so what effect does the roe deer have on the species um, that are on, the, on the, the plants that are growing there? Okay, 
um, or the biodiversity of the habitat. Then it talks again about this index of diversity, explain the difference between species richness and species evenness and why both measurements are needed to assess biodiversity. OK, so we've discussed this already, but richness is the number of species. And evenness is the abundance or the number of individuals. Okay, so both of those are key. We can also say, just make sure that that's clear. There is three marks on this question, okay? So we also, we really need to also add, to get that third mark, we need to add something about why those two things are important, okay? So we would say something like, okay, um, a high biodiversity is, associated with high richness and evenness okay so both of those things are critical okay um, last couple of questions in areas where the population of roe deer was high the Simpsons index of biodiversity was low for shrubs medium high plants and was also low for woodland birds Roe deer eat plants. Most woodland birds do not eat plants. So just one reason why a large roe deer population might, de might decrease the diversity of woodland birds. So um, why? So it says here that. So why might why why might this cause the woodland birds to decrease, even though they're not eating the same thing? OK, so um, it's not to do with competition okay for food we know that what we can say though is that plants are the basis of food chains so we know that obviously at the bottom of the food chain is a plant so because of that okay um, they are food for insects um, and the sorts of animals that the plant the birds actually eat OK, so that if there's no food for the animals itself in terms of the, the, the you know, the, the, the food, the little animals that the, the, they feed on the plants, therefore the birds won't have that. Um, but also, OK, there is the fact that shrubs provide nesting sites and protection and cover and that sort of thing. OK, so either of those would be acceptable answers. Last thing, outline the significance of a low value of Simpson's index of biodiversity. OK. Um, it would mean if there's not much diversity, it would mean that the habitat is dominated by one or only a few species. And also that it is um, the ecosystem is unstable, okay, or is less likely to cope with change. So it makes it a lot more susceptible to things like climate change and um, obviously habitat destruction and that kind of thing, okay. So that is the end of those questions. Um, are there any questions about the answer, any of the answers that I put there? Um, uh, no, I'm good. Excellent. Yeah, right, what I'm going to do is stop the recording now so that's available. There we go.